And one of my biggest goals was to finally walk enough walks that people, you know, that my word meant something again, because I lost that. Um, and that was painful because I knew I had pushed and I had pushed and I had pushed. Um, and, you know, I don't think, you know, people really took my word seriously anymore. And it was really Cam that you were most shocked by. Yeah, in that time. And then she was the very first one to, you know, turn it around, though. And as soon as I actually did what I said I was going to do, she the first red carpet she was on, she was like, hey, Craig was right. I was wrong. I, I'll meet and grow. And but it, you know, it, it took me actually doing it and not just saying I was going to do it. <clears throat> At what point, like in sewing down south, like, you know, for you, was it like, wow. You know, I mean, it seems like you believed in yourself. Not everyone else did. Everyone came around. But like, when were you like, oh, man, like, this is real. Like, this is a real company. This is a success. This is real work. I mean, once we sold our first pillow online, it was like a real transaction. And someone actually paid for the pillow. And I knew we were going to get it shipped out to them. Um, I mean, that's when I knew it was all, you know, it, it, this was going to, this was going to work. Um I, that was the last kind of barrier, you know, of me getting out of my own way. Like we, I was finally selling my pillows and, you know, for my partners, it took a long time for them. It took until we, we did the hurricane pillow for hurricane Dorian and we sold, you know, a ton. Um, they, they wanted to see the volume, but I knew once we sold one that that's all it took. And I knew I wasn't crazy. And, um, and that, I still remember that day I was in Miami just watching from my computer. Interesting. Well, your team has sent me your pillows in the past and lots of other things, candles. So it's all great. Love them all. So thank you to them. I can attest that I have oh, them myself in my home and they're amazing. Not everyone, you know, Patricia had some words to say about your pillows and you had some words to say about hers. Where are you guys today in this? I can't hear you now. I think you muted yourself. I did. Sorry. I was I'm saying like, thank you. Well, at I'm, first I was like, thank you, David. Well, no, the really your pillows are all around and they're great. Um, but yeah, so Pat, Patricia and I are great. Um, you know, I, I try to see her when I'm in town in Charleston, you know, I've kind of been on the road a lot this past year. Um, and we've had a few nice little cocktail hours. Um, and she's great. And we had, you know, that healthy rivalry and we decided to go in two different directions, but I mean, you know, she had a big part in, and really kicking, you know, me in the rear end and being like, you know, what are you doing here? Like, how many chances are you going to blow? So, um, look, Patricia's, Patricia's a heck of a, a character and like person. And uh, I've always been fascinated with her. And, um, you know, I think the healthy ribbing, obviously at the time, um, uh, you know, I wasn't happy about it. And I had some strong words back then, but now as time has moved on, it's, it's, it's all fun. And, um, you know, I've popped on a few of her HSNs to, you know, as a special guest and, um, you know, she's, she roots for me too. So we're in a great place, but yeah, it was, there was some pillow feuding there for a little bit. There was a little bit of pillow feuding, but now that you are, this is such a success. It's almost like, do you appreciate maybe tough love from Patricia? Uh, it, it was almost like fuel to the fire because like I remember when she said that thing about like the quality of my pillows I was like not that I wasn't already driven and I didn't already want to make this a huge company I'm like I am now going to focus so hard that no one can ever say that I'm like I'm just never going to give people openings to say like to trash my pillows um and so it you know it just it helps drive me um and it helps kind of not that I get complacent, but like something happens like that. And you're like, Oh fuck no. All right. Let's, let's sell, let's sell a thousand pillows today. You know, like let's do something. Um, so yeah, no, it's all, all, all appreciated, even though obviously at the time, you know, I, I wasn't saying this. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad you guys are in a good place. So, I mean, you talked about Naomi, like in the Naomi chapters, I mean, I know it sounds like, right, like she had the same story you did, which is to me totally shocking because when do two people break up and have almost the exact same story? But what was her right. first reaction when you went to her and said, hey, I'm going to write a book. <laughs> you know, there's going to be the Naomi chapters. Do you want to be involved? Like what was her first reaction? 
Well, timing is just the most wild thing in this world. And it's funny because I think timing affected our original relationship negatively. Um, you know, just timing is just, a, you know, it affects everything. But the point of it is she actually, when we had gotten to this chapter, had just broken up with her boyfriend in New York, you know, and had reached out to me and you know, kind of came clean and apologized about a lot of stuff and was like, you know, I'm coming back to Charleston. And um it was just nice, you know, it was, the, it was good closure of, you know, of, you know, a lot of things that were never said that I thought should have been said. And so we had, you know, and I was nice, you know, and I had kind words about a breakup too. I was like, look, breakups suck. Like, sorry, you're going through this, but you know, at least you get to come back to Charleston. Um, and, you know, basically she was a little concerned about the show and I was like, look, you know, uh, it'll be good for the show for you to come back. And, um, you know, as long as you eat crow a little bit and, it's it's uh good and she and she did so i was like hey you know i'm writing a book and you know i was wondering if my if my writer could reach out to you and uh she was like sure of course and so she spoke with him for a couple of hours and uh you know the timing was just right it just um you know i was like single at the time it just it would have been weird if it was a year prior you know and she was still dating or you know a couple months later when i was dating but it just worked and so i'm glad we were able to get that you know, that information from her. How nervous was she to come back to the show to, to your point? Well, I mean, look, she kind of went scorched earth when she left, um, which I knew she didn't really mean that stuff. You know, she was leaving because her boyfriend was making her. Um, and, you know, she, she was like, you you were right, Craig. Like, you know, because look, people enjoy you doing it. They just do. I mean, um, you know, it's a good time with your friends and, um, and I, I think she was a little nervous, but, you know, at the end of the day, like if, if I did, if I wasn't holding a grudge, then, you know, no one else was going to hold one. Um, and I think that's, well, I mean, you'll get to see some stuff play out this season of Southern Charm. You'll get to see a lot of this stuff. There were a few people that might've had a grudge left one or two, but um, I mean, look, I think she was nervous, but I think she was happy to be back. Do you think like her coming back to the show was like in part because of you like not romantically, but you know, like you kind of helped ease her into it because you weren't holding a grudge? Well, I mean, I think some of us have, I think, I don't know, you know, when I got the call and it was like, how do you feel about, you know, Naomi coming back to the show? I, you know, at the, at the end of the day, I'm a businessman and, a, and I love doing Southern Charm and I, I truly thought fans would enjoy it and our audience. And I thought it would be good for the show. So I was like, sure. Um, you know, if I said no, it probably wouldn't have affected anything, but I just, you know, I, we didn't go down that route. I was, I was fine with it. Did you, who else would you want to come back? Like if you could choose anyone else that is not there, you know, like we had a lot of people leave last season. It was a good season. It just felt like a transition season in a sense. Yeah, I mean, Cam obviously would be great. Um, I actually, um, I, look, I just like that Bravo is kind of this multiverse now, you know? Fuck, like if someone from Vanderpump on the West Coast wants to come try out Charleston, come on, come on over, you know? Like Stasi or Schwartz wants to come be on the show or Lala. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, Cam obviously is the, the easy answer for that one. Um, that but, uh, you know, like, I mean, it's crazy because, yeah, I got to stay with that. <laughs> what else were you going to say? Nothing. We just, we've had some people that were television gold in the past on our shows and man, were those some crazy years, but uh, yeah, I think, I think Cam misses it and maybe one day I'll be able to talk her, talk her into coming back. <laughs>